morning all of you this is your prabhakar and welcome to our channel dawn of chemistry in this video we are going to discuss about the solutions in the solutions the main important topic is there that is abnormal molar mass normally by using the colligative properties like elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point osmotic pressure and relative lowering of vapor pressures we can find the molar mass of substances the molar mass obtained is the same as the original molar mass of some compounds but some compounds it is showing a different value why it is showing the different value that is nothing but the abnormal molar mass and to overcome this error any another term is proposed means that is van t hoff factor so in this video i am completely dedicating to the abnormal molar mass concept van t hoff factor concept and so many types of questions they can ask based on this van t hoff factor concept so how they are going to ask the questions also i am going to explain in this video whatever is a needed for your local entrance test examinations neat examinations mains examinations and advanced examinations all the topic is going to be present in this video based on abnormal molar mass and van t hoff factor let us get into the details abnormal molar mass what is this abnormal molar mass and all the things means to understand or to calculate molar mass we have different formulas p not minus p by p not is equals to x s w s by g m w s into this one n s by n s plus and this will be coming here molar mass moles of solvent you can calculate from which you can find the gram molecular weight of the solute you can get here number of moles of uh, solvent will come here you will get number of moles of solute and number of moles of solute and next one delta tf is equals to kf into m kf into w by g m w into 1000 by w will come here we can calculate the gram molecular weight delta tb equals to kb into m kb into w by g m w into 1000 by w pi is equals to crt w by g m w into 1000 by v into rt here from this you can write w s by g m w s divided by W S by G M W S by W S by G M W S will come. From all these equations, we can calculate the molar mass of a solute. Here you can find the molar mass of solute. Here you can find molar mass of solute. Here you can find molar mass of the solute. By what methods we can find the molar mass of solute? Means. this method is oswalds wacker method you can calculate the molar mass by using the oswald wacker method tf this method is depression in freezing point is cryoscopic method the depression in freezing point method is cryoscopic method you can use and for elevation in boiling point you can use ebullioscopic method you can use by using elevation in boiling point by using ebullioscopic method we can find the molar mass and finally osmotic pressure method the osmotic pressure method is Berkeley and Hartley method. Berkeley and then Hartley method. By using these uh, colligative properties, we can find the molar mass of the substance. For relative lowering of vapor pressure, it means Oswald Wacker method is there. And for depression in freezing point, means cryoscopic method is present. Elevation in boiling point is there means ebullioscopic method is present, 
and for osmotic pressure is there means berkeley hartley method is present by using these methods you can find the molar mass of any unknown substance again we will discuss these methods under the separate headings of the videos i will uh, upload videos on this every method separately from the new can line let us see what is this abnormal molar mass and why it is coming next by using any of the method you can find the molar mass of acetic acid so first i have dissolved acetic acid in water i am dissolving acetic acid in water i am calculating this gram molecular weight at the same time i am dissolving same acetic acid in benzene benzene solvent here water solvent so and i am finding the gram molecular weight okay. so to identify the molar mass of acetic acid first i have dissolved acetic acid in water and i have identified rlvp value or depression increasing point or LA elevation in boiling point or osmotic pressure from which i calculated the molar mass of acetic acid at the same time i have dissolved same acetic acid in benzene solvent by using the same any of the method you can use any of the method to find the gram molecular weight and i have identified gram molecular weight in benzene by using the any of the method when i have calculated the molar mass of this acetic acid it is coming as 120 and when not 120 ma it is coming as 30 and when i calculated in benzene it is coming as 120 why it is coming as 60 there and why it is coming as 30 there and why it is coming as 120 means they really got surprised to get these results but originally ch3 cooh molar mass is 60 the original molar mass calculated from the formula is 60 if you dissolve this in water and calculate molar mass means it is coming 30 and when you dissolve this in benzene and calculate molar mass means it is becoming 120 why this kind of oh, confusion is coming means they really wondered why this kind of results are coming to overcome that thing van hoff is a scientist who has done so many experiments and he gave conclusions for the abnormal molar mass so why the molar mass is coming different when it compared to the other original molar mass what is the reason for that one means see here ch3cooh when you dissolve in water it forms ch3co minus and h plus it undergo dissociation when acetic acid dissolved in water it undergo dissociation here you see when acetic acid dissolved in benzene because of hydrogen bond formation it undergo association so because of hydrogen bond formation you know very well what is the hydrogen bond because of hydrogen bond formation it will undergo association so because of this thing there is a chance that the solute particles may undergo dissociation or solute particles may undergo association so since they undergo dissociation or association we know very well all these four are known as colligative properties why we call them as colligative properties means colligative means collective so the colligative properties are nothing but the collective properties when alone acetic acid is present only one molecule is present when it undergo dissociation two ions are coming here because of dissociation two ions are coming because of association half is coming two moles you take means it is only forming one mole here one mole you take means it is forming two moles but originally here only one molecule only present so originally if it is as it is as ch3cooh means its molecular weight will come as 60 but it is not staying as it is 
when you dissolve this in water it is undergoing the dissociation when it is present in benzene because of hydrogen bonding it is undergoing the association so since it is undergoing dissociation molecular weight decreases calculate but here because of association molecular weight calculated increases so because of dissociation of course number of particles increases but it is in the denominator thing so that's why molecular weight decreases so because of dissociation molecular weight calculated decreases because of association molecular weight calculated increases that's why the molar mass we are calculating will be different compared to the actual molar mass that is the reason why um solute particles will show the abnormal molar mass okay fine sir solutions are showing abnormal molar mass that is very fine how can we overcome this error to overcome this error van't hoff is a scientist who proposed a concept known as the van't hoff factor concept for non electrolytes non electrolytes means substance when dissolved in water does not undergo dissociation that is nothing but the van't hoff factor if you take urea nh2co nh2 it will be as it is if you take glucose c6h12o6 there is no decomposition it will be as it is if you take acetaldehyde ch3cho it remain as it is so these compounds are known as non electrolytes and by using these direct formulas for non electrolytes you do molecular mass calculation means it will be coming as it is but when you take electrolytes that they undergo dissociation or association means because of decomposition or because of association the molecular mass calculated will be different to overcome that thing van t hoff factor is proposed let us see what is this van t hoff factor have a look on this this is very very important point and even even board examinations also they will ask you why molar mass increases during association or when molar mass calculated will be increasing when molecular mass calculated will be decreasing that kind of questions they will ask you not only acetic acid you can take any carboxylic acid in non polar solvent then if this is a now one example if you want multi examples means any carboxylic acid in non polar solvent not only c6h6 benzene you can use ccl4 you can use any non polar solvent even you can use carbon disulfide also anything you can use have a look on these things next what is this van t hoff factor and how we have to correct these properties let us see what is this van t hoff factor and how to do problems on this thing means i am not rubbing this one because there is a correction of the properties i will write them on the bottom so you will get clarity on this thing van t hoff factor van hoff studied so many electrolytes and their effect on the colligative properties and he proposed this van t hoff factor concept this is i van t hoff factor i is equals to number of species after association or dissociation by number of species before association or dissociation 
so see van t hoff factor i how you can define van t hoff factor i means when an electrolyte dissolved in water the ratio of number of species after association or dissociation by number of species before association or dissociation will be writing i am mentioning here species i am not mentioning atom i am not mentioning molecule i am not mentioning ion i am mentioning as a species so the ratio of number of species after association or dissociation by number of species before association or before dissociation that is one thing and i is equals to ratio of normal molar mass to that of abnormal molar mass so the ratio of normal molar mass to that of abnormal molar mass so normal molar mass why it is coming volta means i will tell you the reason basically we study in terms of colligative property so normal molar mass by abnormal molar mass or i is equals to observed colligative property <coughs> divided by calculated <coughs> colligative property observed colligative property by colligative calculated colligative property so see colligative property is directly proportional to number of species right as i told you colligative property is a collective property is it or not ma colligative property the name itself indicates it's a collective property so colligative property is directly proportional to number of species so that's why the ratio of observed colligative property by calculated so see number of species after dissociation after dissociation or association only we will observe the colligative property so that's why the number of species is directly proportional to the observed colligative property number of species before association or dissociation means it is calculated only right are you understanding we will take gram molecular weight for acetic acid as a 60 we will find the colligative property means that is calculated colligative property if you do experiment and find the molar mass means or find the colligative properties means that is observed colligative property that's why it is the thing number of species after association or dissociation by number of species before dissociation this is a very very important thing why this is very very important means confusion because confusion here observed by calculated is there in exam you will write calculated by observed you will write simply remember i value is number of species after association or dissociation by number of species before association or dissociation and number of species is directly proportional to colligative property how do you remember this thing means here you see colligative property and gram molecular weight are inversely proportional right here this is in the numerator thing means the molar mass is present in the denominator so they are inversely proportional that's why volta will come be careful <clears throat> how they can ask problems on this thing means for a compound let us say benzoic acid when benzoic acid dissolved in water its molar mass is observed as x what is the van t hoff factor for the solution they will ask this question or they say when potassium ferrocyanide dissolved in water the colligative property observed was y what is the van t hoff factor of that thing or they will give the van t hoff factor and they will ask you what will be the colligative property this is the direct way of asking the question they will give the molar masses and they will ask you what is i value they will give colligative properties and they will ask you the i values and based on these things also they will ask you the i so like that we can easily understand what is this van t hoff factor now let us see how we can derive a equation for this 
Van Hoff factor. Listen carefully. <coughs> I will call these things. I will rub this. So see during dissociation. Listen carefully. This is very important. Let us take A and it is dissociating into N B. Let us take initial moles is one. This is zero. Final moles. If you take alpha is degree of dissociation. This we have already studied in chemical equilibrium and all. the ratio of the ratio of number of molecules produced to the total molecules taken is known as the degree of dissociation. So this will be one minus alpha and this will be an alpha. Now see total moles after. Dissociation. How does the total moles after dissociation means one minus alpha plus n alpha take alpha common one plus alpha into n minus one. Come, this is the thing very important thing you have to understand. Let us take a substance A after dissociation it is forming N B so that's why one minus zero one minus alpha and n alpha. Let me tell you some examples for this kind of dissociations means N A C L will give you N A plus and C L minus N equals to two. M G C L two you take M G two plus plus 2 Cl minus n equals to 3 because three ions are produced. Al Cl 3 you take Al 3 plus plus 3 Cl minus n equals to 4. Al 2 SO 4 thrice 2 Al 3 plus plus 3 SO 4 2 minus n equals to 5. K 4 Fe Cn 6 times 4 K plus plus FeCN6 power minus 4 will come and equals to 5. Like that, they will give you different compounds, and for every compound, you should be able to identify the n value. Identifying n value is the crucial part. Some exceptional compounds I will show you. See CSI3 and then Hg2Cl2. CSI3 and then Hg2Cl2. If CSI3 decomposes, means CSI3 minus will come Hg2Cl2 undergo means Hg2 2 plus plus 2 Cl minus I equals to 2 and I equals to 3 will come. This is very very important question. No? Normally CSI3 how you will write means generally you don't know this thing means CS3 plus and then 3i minus you will be taking Van't Hoff factor as 4 which is wrong one for this thing also you will take Van't Hoff factor as 4 that is also wrong so that's why having track on the different number of compounds is very very important thing so when a compound undergo decomposition whatever the number of ions are coming. That is nothing but the n value. Now let us proceed to the further derivation. So we are going through these things. So see, you know very well what is the formula for I? I is equals to number of species before association or dis. After association or dissociation by number of species before association or dissociation. How many number of species before dissociation means only one. After dissociation, after dissociation will be one plus alpha into n minus one. And before dissociation only one is there. You know very well. Number of moles is directly proportional to number of species only, right? 
so that's why the Avogadro number gets cancelled. Directly you can write this. So i minus one equals to alpha into n minus one. Alpha equals to i minus one by n minus one. This is a very very important formula. In this case, some conditions will be there. If alpha equals to one, i equals to n. <coughs> if n equals to one, if n equals to one. I equals to one. N equals to two. I is equals to alpha plus one. N equals to three. N equals to three means two alpha plus one will come. N equals to four. Alpha equals to I equals to three alpha plus one will come. Like this, you can have different forms for this Van der Waals form. so what is this van der waals factor and how can we classify or how can we identify the van der waals factor for a dissociation phenomena for a dissociation phenomena by using this thing you can identify the i value and the alpha value simply i value is equals to the formula you can use 1 plus alpha into n minus 1 like this we can understand this So to go through this carefully. Based on this thing, directly they will give, they will give different cases, different alpha values, and they will give the electrolyte directly. They will not give you the n value. You have to identify the n value, and you have to do the problem. So be careful with that thing. This is how we can do for the dissociation case. Let us see for the association case how to do this. I'm rubbing this part. Let us go for association. For this association, let us say A gives one by n b initial same procedure you can use man. Whatever you have used earlier, initial is one and zero. Final one minus alpha and alpha by n. You know very well in equilibrium we have done so many things. If alpha is the degree of dissociation, means n is there means the form will be an alpha. Simple. A gives two b. A gives three b. One mole reacts means two moles produced. The alpha reacts means Two alpha produces one mole reacts means three moles produce the alpha reacts means three alpha produces. A gives B by two one mole reacts means half mole produces the alpha reacts means alpha by two moles produces in the same way this one. So total moles in final One minus alpha plus alpha by n. One plus alpha into one by n minus one. Now this is also same thing. The best example we will be doing is CH three CO OH will undergo dimerization. CH three CO OH twice. He gives B by three trimerization. And A gives B by four means tetramerization. So for this dimerization and tetramerization means n equals to two, n equals to three, and n equals to four. We will substitute as it is into this. You know very well. I is equals to what you can write number of species after dissociation by. Number of species before dissociation. So one plus alpha into one by n minus one. Alpha equals to i minus n by one by n minus one. Come if alpha equals to one, i equals to n. N equals to one. N equals to one means. I equals to one. N equals to two means N equals to two means what will be coming here? This will be 
1 by 2 means 0.5 minus 0.5 means minus 0.5 alpha so 1 minus <coughs> One by n minus one. Denominator will be n will be coming one minus denominator will be n one minus n by n will come one minus n by n multiplies onto this thing means so much will be coming. So this you will write here as it is. If n equals to two means it will be one by two. So one minus 0.5 alpha n equals to 3 i is equals to n equals to 3 means what you can write n equals to 3 means it is 1 by 3 minus 1 1 by 3 minus 1 means minus 2 by 3 alpha so 1 minus 2 by 3 alpha like this you can find the problem based on this rent of factor Like this, we can do number of problems based on this direct compounds. Based on these direct compounds. Let us see, sir, what is the correction Van Hoff gave means? Always, when colligative property, colligative property multiplied by I error is removed. Error is removed. So when it is multiplied by I value, error will be removed. That means P naught minus P by P naught equals to I into X is delta T F equals to I K F into M delta T V equals to I K V into M pi is equals to i c r t these are the corrected colligative property equations that's why whenever you are doing problems you should not use any of this one you have to use these formulas you have to multiply everything with the i values and you have to do always remember some students will be taking these as the primary standard and they will be doing the problems whenever i is equals to n whenever n equals to 1 whenever n is equals to 1 then only you can use these formulas otherwise you can't use this formula so be careful whenever n is equals to 1 then only whenever n is equals to 1 then only you can use this formula otherwise always remember whenever you are doing colligative property problem you have to remind these and you have to do the problem this is a very very important one based on this how they can ask questions means i will tell you see carefully this is the problem this is the most familiar problem see carefully the question will easily confuse you that kind of question it is simple question but complicated which of the following solution will have highest delta tf value which of the following solution will have highest delta tf value 3 molal urea solution 4 molal urea solution 2 molal NaCl solution 2 molal NaCl solution 0.33 molal 
MgCl2 solution One point three three molar NgCl two solution, one molar AlCl three solution, and all are of same value. All are of same value. <coughs> This is the highest standard of asking question. Not highest standard. In terms of options wise, this is the highest standard of question. Question wise, they are asking just delta T of value. If they want to increase the standard of question means, which will have highest freezing point? Which will have highest freezing point? They will ask you. So see how this will come means four molar ulium. If you use any of this formula means definitely the answer will be first one because. Delta T of is directly proportional to molality. Whatever is having highest molality, that will have delta T of value. But here you see, the solutions are different. I value so delta T of is directly proportional to I M value. So that's why for this, for everything you have to take alpha is one. We they don't mention the thing. So that's why I M value is four for this solution. For this four and for this also four will come and for this also four will come. Since I M values are same, all will have same value. This is the answer. So see the complexity of the question here. <coughs> and you see which will have highest freezing point means delta T of is maximum means the freezing point will go into more negative values. So more negative values means. Lowest freezing point. So freezing point is inversely proportional to delta T of value. Even vapor pressure also is inversely proportional to relative lowering of vapor pressure. Osmotic pressure and then delta T B. Delta T B and pi are directly proportional to the boiling point and then osmotic pressures. But these two will be Inversely proportional. Be careful with this thing. I will explain these things in another video in detail. So with like this, we can study about the what is abnormal molar mass, what is the reason for abnormal molar mass, what is the Van't Hoff factor, and how can we derive equation between the degree of dissociation and the Van't Hoff factor. What is the highest standard of question they can ask you in terms of options? This is the maximum twisting they can give based on this Van't Hoff factors case. Okay, right? that is for this video. Man, if you are new to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Like the video, share the video with your friends. If you have any doubts or if you want any concept video, means you can do that in comment section. I will make the video on that thing. Thank you.